Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a shop whiteboard. Now for those of you who have been viewers of the show for quite some time, you may think that you've already heard this done before. And we did quite a while back make a whiteboard uh, using some melamine and some resin poured on top, which is a really cool build and we had some fun with it. Today's show is a little bit different, and while it's still a whiteboard, we're going to give it a little bit of a twist, we're going to give it a little bit of a crafty element, and the whiteboard part of it, well, you know what, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you. Well, the whiteboard element of this project is something that I found on the internet. And what it is, is it's actually a whiteboard. Um, they call it a whiteboard paper, I believe. And it is designed and meant to be stuck to your wall. Now, I'm not a fan of that. I really don't want um, to stick anything to my walls out here because everything gets moved so often. Now, this little kit comes with some magnets, that's these little pink things here, and three different markers, red, black, and blue. Magnets because this whiteboard is magnetic. Uh, it also comes with an eraser. So this particular kit uh, for the wall whiteboard, I believe this is an 18 by 24. I am gonna confirm that. But what I want to do is I want to cut a piece of hardboard that are the same dimensions as this whiteboard kit. Well, I've checked the dimension of our white roll paper, they call it, and it's actually a little less than 18 by 24, but it's close enough. Uh, this is a very thick material and it is magnetic. Um, the problem here is that it's been rolled up so tight the back is self-adhesive. There is no way that I'm going to be able to stick this thing down and not have it lift up. So unfortunately, that kind of puts my project on hold for just a little bit. Um, as I lay this out onto this board here, I'm going to place another piece of hardboard on top of it and weigh it down for a couple days to straighten this out. Because um, there's no way that it's ever going to adhere to this as long as it continues to try to curl up like that. Uh, you can see that as soon as I stick this down, it's going to try to pull up. So. We're going to get this put in place here on top of this board. Uh, we're going to clamp, clamp it together, set it aside. We're going to let it sit probably until uh, I'd say two or three days. Let it sit and then we're going to adhere it to our hardboard. And there we have our whiteboard attached to our hardboard. Now it looks terrible right now, but that's because this is a protective film that's on top of it that I haven't peeled off yet. We're gonna leave that on there. Now, guys, we could call this done at this point in time, but that would be one heck of a boring project. So we're going to build a bit of an interesting frame around this whiteboard, and it's all gonna start off with some three quarter inch thick pine that we're gonna rip into strips of one and a half inches wide. Well, I've taken those pieces of pine and I have cross cut them to their final lengths, which is five inches longer than both our length and our width of our whiteboard. So I have two pieces at 29 inches and two pieces at 23 inches. Now, we're going to put our longer 29 inch pieces to the side and we want to concentrate on our 23 inch pieces. Guys, the first thing that we want to do here is we want to um, we want to route a quarter inch deep rabbit right here in the side, and I want to route it so that I'm gonna say it is three eighths of an inch deep into the board. Now it's not going to be the whole length of the board. It's going to be a stopped rabbit that will coincide with just a little inside of what this dimension is right here of our hardboard, which should be 
and it is 18 inches. So let's get that done over at the router table and I'll show you where to take it next. Well, due to the nature of the router bit, our rabbit does not have square corners. And because of that, our hardboard cannot fit all the way in and we need it to. So I've squared off a line right here. I'm going to square it off this way as well. And we're going to chisel out these corners to give us a proper fitting rabbit. All right, and there we go with the square corners. Our board on the 18 inch side fits nicely into our pieces of pine. Now guys, don't worry about perfection here. That's one of the best parts about this frame is that it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna see what I mean in just a little bit. So now we need to do just a little bit of layout on our frame pieces. And what I'm going to do, guys, again, this is not uh, exact. We're going to take our board and we're going to come in, oh, I don't know, let's say an eighth of an inch to maybe three sixteenths. I'm guessing. And we're just going to make, place a line there. And using our finger again as a fence, we're going to duplicate that line on the other side. Now we're not going to worry too, too much about how straight or how perfect it is. That's the beauty of this frame. And it's also what opens it up to every level of skill. There's not really much precision in this frame. It's all about just having fun in this case. So here, we'll just add this line. Okay. Now, this line here actually represents the final uh, size of our frame pieces. But what we're going to do is right, oh, I don't know, say right here. We're going to bring this out on a little curve. Just like that. Let me, let me readjust the camera here and I'll show you. So we got this little one curve here and we're going to put another one over here somewhere. Let's say right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on this board, just roughly. You don't need them identical. So here, we'll take this out of here and we'll just Mark it out on this board. It's just a little curve like that. And then maybe one over here. Okay. Now guys, with that done, we're going to take this over now to the scroll saw and we're going to cut along these lines that we did and cut on these curves all the way along and then up these curves and across just like that and we're going to do that exact same thing on our longer 29 inch pieces and once you get all of those cut I'll show you what you end up with at that point okay so now it's time to shape these so one thing you may notice here is that these little nubs that we've kind of left they're not even they're not equal they're not the same you know, on both pieces, they're quite random. And that is what you want. Um, you want these things to be somewhat random. Don't fall into the trap of making them perfectly spaced. So in case you're wondering, you know, why didn't you give a dimension to those, Kenny? It's because you just got to go with it. And you're going to understand a little more when we get into the next step, which is shaping these pieces. So let's head over to the oscillating drum sander. Well, the first thing that we want to do all the way along our length is round this over. Take off this top corner and this top corner and make it 
round. However, wherever these notches are here, you want them to be raised up. So you're going to be taking off some of the thickness as well as some of the sides. Um, it's hard to explain. Let me get this one section right here shaped and then I'll show you what I mean. And at some point in time, you're looking for this kind of an effect. We can see how this is raised up a little bit and we have the round shape here and the round shape on this side with this center profile still left as it is. Now, as we get into final shaping, I'm probably gonna shape this to make it a little more obvious. But in case you haven't figured this out yet, we're kind of making like a fake bamboo. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to continue to shape these pieces all the way along. And when I get all four pieces of our frame rough shaped, I'll come back and see ya and show you what to do with it next. Well, once you get the rough shaping done, you should have something that looks a little like this. Now, these knuckles here, I'm gonna call them, they're a little large for my liking. I made them about one inch wide here, roughly, and they're just a little too wide for me. And I'm gonna shape these down and make them just a little more streamlined here so that they are much uh, thinner than what they are right now. Well, we've made our protruding sections a little more narrow than what we had them. Um, the last thing we need to do for the rough shaping is we need to round this off because it's square. It's bamboo isn't square. So we're going to round off these corners, give it a little bit of shape. And then once we get that done, it's just a matter of a lot of sanding here, guys, to take out any of these uh, rough edges. Right now it's just rough sanded, it's rough shaped. So we need to take out these ridges here. You can see this one along here. We're gonna go through and sand all of these up um, and get them almost ready to their final stage. Well, the last thing that we need to do for shaping is our ends. The ends don't look quite right. So I'm just going to very carefully here we're just going to draw a little line around the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to take this over to the oscillating drum and we're just going to kind of sand a wedge in here to make the ends of each one of our frame pieces look right. Let me get one sanded and I'll show you what I mean. And there we go. We've just carved a little bit of that out. And you can see it's not very deep. It's only about an inch and a half in from the end, but it's enough to give the illusion that it's hollow. So we're gonna do this exact same sanding on the ends of all four of our pieces. Well, as you can see by these pieces, it's not sanded in very far, but looking at the end, look at what a difference this makes instead of just that flat board. Um, way better result, way better effect. So now we need to get into the assembly. There's a little bit more sanding we need to do, but let me show you how we're gonna start to assemble this. Well, our whiteboard on the sides, the, our fake bamboo is just going to uh, sit there like this with that rabbit going right over top of our whiteboard. Now, here's the funky part. What we need to do is we need to take one of these side pieces. We're going to line it up where we want it, just like this. And we're going to mark right here at the sides of our um, smaller bamboo pieces. We're just going to mark where that width is because what we need to do is we need to take this over to the oscillating drum and we are going to sand essentially uh, an arch in there so that this piece of bamboo will nest right on top of the side ones and sit flush on our whiteboard and there is our first one done and with our whiteboard here right in that rabbit we can see now that this piece of fake bamboo is going to sit flat on our whiteboard 
and as well it's gonna kind of nest here on this piece here just like that so we're gonna do the same thing on our other two long pieces to get them to nest just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Don't get too hung up on perfection here. Um, just get them sanded and get them done. And that there is the uh, partial assembly. This is going to be glued. We're gonna end up gluing here in these sections where we put our little divots. Uh, to nest the pieces together so they will be glued there but there's one more thing that I want to do um, to give this a little more character and that requires just a little bit of fire well what I want to do to finish off the look of this frame is give it a little bit of color at each one of our knuckles and for that I'm just going to hit it with the blowtorch and let me show you what I've got in mind here Just like that. Just a little bit of color, a little bit of burning at each one of those knuckles. And there we go. We're gonna do it at each one of these spots here and then we can glue this frame together by placing a little dab of glue in here at each one of our join corners and clamping it together. Okay, and so to finish it off on the back, to hold our whiteboard in, um, i am just used a few photo turns along the side with our rabbit, and as well, I've placed a couple of photo hangers with some uh, picture hanger wire. Now, check that out. All we need to do now is remove our plastic coating Just like that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And of course, with this being magnetic, our markers can stay right there on the board, as can the eraser. That magnets to the board as well. Uh, and everything is all in one place. So uh, there you go. Looks like I've got a new whiteboard for the shop. And there you have it. A whiteboard with a custom bamboo frame. Guys, this project is awesome for a lot of reasons. And it's not because of that adhesive magnetic whiteboard kit, I guess we'll call it. What it is, is that frame. The frame is made out of cheap and accessible material being pine from a big box store. And the best part is that it's all freehand, say on the scroll saw, and with use of a sander to shape the pieces. Chances of it being square are pretty slim, and chances of me caring that it's square are even more slim than that. This opens itself up to every level of woodworking, from the person who's starting on day one right to the top, to the guys like me that have been doing it for 45 plus years. Guys, it takes zero skill to do this. You just shape it. You cut it on the scroll saw. If you don't have a scroll saw, use a jigsaw. If you don't have an oscillating drum sander, use a belt sander. If you don't have a belt sander, use a palm sander. If you don't have any of those, use a spoke shave. Sand it by hand. Use a sanding drum in your drill press. Whatever you need to do to get it done. But there are so many different ways that you can make this project and the results are awesome. 
Now guys, that whiteboard kit, that's not what this show is really about. What it's about is making a different type of frame. What it's about is taking an idea and running with it and trying something new. Whether or not it works, who cares? As long as you tried it. You can sit there all day and say, nah, that's not gonna work. But if you don't try it, how will you ever know? Because if I didn't try this method here, this bamboo frame would never exist. And I don't know what you think, but I think it's kind of cool. And I think it has a lot more applications than just this one. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I'm going to post the link to that whiteboard kit down below. I'm going to warn you, it's not exactly cheap, uh, but it is a pretty good kit and does a great job. Uh, but if you're interested, you can check that out. Guys, I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're going to think outside the box and try different frames like this for yourself. But more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.